GitHub Copilot is back in the news again, and you know what that means? The legality question is back again. But before we get to that, let's discuss why people are even talking about it. The main reason for this is GitHub Copilot is generally available to all developers. This is a really weird way to phrase it, but what they mean is GitHub Copilot is available to all developers for $10 a month or for $100 a year. This is in USD pricing, so adjust it for whatever region you're in. With the caveat that it can be free for certain users. One of those users is a fairly well-defined group if you're a part of the Verified Students group. If you sign up to GitHub and you have access to the GitHub Student Developer Package, you'll also get access to GitHub Copilot, and you better keep renewing that as long as you have a functional student email. Not every single school is a part of that program, but a lot of them are. And the best way to get an adult hooked on something is to get them hooked as a kid. The other group of people that are gonna get it for free I want to find as maintainers of popular open source projects. What does popular mean? Well, I don't know. GitHub doesn't know either because they haven't actually made the criteria public. But if you are a maintainer of a popular project, then you'll get 12 months free access. And then once the period ends, then you can re-verify and get another 12 months. And then later in the year, there is also going to be company pricing available as well, which is likely going to be discounted prices for bulk purchasing a bunch of licenses. Now, outside of private repos and just throwaway projects that I wrote to get something on my system working, like I make a soundboard, I make a script to do something in my system, things like that. Outside of those cases, I would not touch this with a 10-foot pole because... GitHub Copilot is standing on these really shaky, legally untested grounds. But the problem is that probably nobody in the FOSS world actually has the money to take on Microsoft and GitHub to work out if what they're doing is actually legal. So if you don't know what Copilot is, basically what it is is a code generation tool that will generate code snippets based on a section of text you give it. So you could say, calculate the income and revenue of this set of businesses based on this set of data, or generate the boilerplate code for this library and things like that. And it does it relatively well. Like it's not perfect, but it does simplify the process massively. And obviously a model like this can't be magic. This is an AI model trained on the code that is available on GitHub, which is a great way to do it. The Problem, though, is it doesn't take into account the licenses of the code. So you have MIT code, you have BSD code, you have GPL code, and all of this other code all being mixed together. And you have code that is derivative works of this code without making any reference to that original code. And the question is whether doing that is actually violating all those licenses. Hector Martin, the main guy working on RC Linux, has a massive Twitter thread about this, which I'll leave linked down below, but there's one part I do want to read out. Neural networks, whether artificial or biological, do not erase copyright. If I read some source code and write down identical or very similar source code, that is a derivative work of the original. Same goes for GitHub Copilot. And I absolutely agree. Now, I've seen a lot of people out there arguing against the creation of the AI model itself, saying that because the AI model is proprietary, which would potentially conflict with the GPL, and the fact that it's being trained on code that has conflicting licenses, that this is a problem. But I don't think the model itself is the problem, because the code inside of the model isn't being used as code you would compile, it is being used as generic data. And from my understanding, most of the licenses that people use, whether it's GPL v2, GPL v3, the various forms of BSD licenses and MIT licenses and things like that, don't have clauses against being used to train some form of AI model or something that could potentially catch that. I'm not saying there are no licenses with GitHub that have clauses like that, and ever since Copilot started to exist, those licenses definitely did start to pop up, but it's definitely not the majority of the licenses. But then there's also the problem of the GitHub TOS, where it explicitly says 
We may use aggregated or other non-personally identifying information collected through the program to operate, analyze, and improve our products and services. I don't know what takes precedence, GitHub's TOS or the license on your code. You want to put your code onto GitHub with a license that could say you cannot use this code to improve your products and services. Is that code even allowed to be on GitHub? Is the fact that you put it on GitHub with that TOS being like that nullifying the license? I have no idea. And that is a question for a lawyer in every individual country. But I do think you can create a fairly compelling ethical argument against the creation of the model, but that's not something I really want to get into in this video. What I want to focus on isn't the model itself, it is the output of the model and how that output is intended to be used, which is as a tool for generating source code to be used in other repos. And Drew DeVault has an absolutely fantastic write-up about this whole situation, but he points out that even with fairly liberal software licenses, fairly permissive software licenses, not including the license is still going to be a problem. So for the MIT license, permission is hereby granted subject to the following conditions. The above copyright notice and this permission notice shall be included in all copies or substantial portions of the software. For a BSD style license, redistribution and use in source and binary forms with or without modification are permitted provided the following conditions are met. Redistributions of source code must contain the above copyright notice, this list of conditions, and the following disclaimer. And Copilot can absolutely generate copyright notices and permission notices and licenses, but it may not be the correct one for this snippet that contains substantial portions of the software, let alone a copyleft license like a GPL style license. You may convey a work based on the program or the modifications to produce it from the program in the form of source code under the terms of section four, provided that you also meet all of these conditions. You must license the entire work as a whole under this license to anyone who comes in possession of a copy. And then for the Mozilla Public License or the MPL, all distribution of covered software in source code form, including any modifications that you create or to which you contribute, must be under the terms of this license. You must inform recipients that the source code form of the covered software is governed by the terms of this license and how they can obtain a copy of this license. You may not attempt to alter or restrict the recipient's rights in the source code form. Basically, in short, if the output of Copilot is similar enough and substantial enough to seem like it's a derivative work of another project, then it must follow the terms of that original project. Now, a single line like declaring a variable or boilerplate code, things like that, that's really hard to say is under a certain license. But when it's taking, say, a whole function block or declaring a class in Java and things like that, and it seems awfully similar to another project, that's a bit easier of an argument to make. And Drew laid out a couple of points that GitHub should probably consider. Firstly, allow GitHub users and repositories to opt out of being incorporated into the model. Better yet, allow them to opt in. Secondly, track the software licenses which are incorporated into the model and inform users of their obligations with respect to those licenses. Alternatively, I would say allow users to exclude incompatible licenses from the output that they're getting. I don't particularly agree with point three though, Remove copyleft code from the model entirely unless you want to make the model and its support code free software as well. I don't really think the model is a problem. I can totally understand this from an ethical perspective though. A legal one, that's a bit harder to say. And then fourthly, consider compensating the copyright owners of free software projects incorporated into the model with a margin from the copilot usage fees in exchange for a license permitting this use. Now, it'd be kind of unfair to not include some of GitHub's perspective here. The problem, though, is they're not really saying much about the whole situation. I can understand why, though. But there is a couple of tweets from the old CEO of GitHub, who, while Copilot was being made, was the CEO. In general, one, training ML systems, machine learning systems, on public data is fair use. Two, the output belongs to the operator, just like with a compiler. We expect that IP and AI will be an interesting policy discussion around the world in the coming years, and we're eager to participate. 
Point number one, the public data we're talking about in this case is referring to source code that is licensed under specific terms, where if you're going to use that source code, then you have to follow the terms of that license. Secondly, fair use isn't something you can just declare. This is basically the YouTuber defense here. Fair use is something you have to prove in a court of law. Also, fair use is a defense that exists in the United States and doesn't exist in most other countries. Now, other countries may have their own equivalents and things that are slightly different, but fair use in particular is just for America. And the second point is basically saying that GPL doesn't exist. So if you take a GPL project, you go and make modifications to it and release a proprietary version because you compiled it, it belongs to the operator. And I guess that means the license doesn't matter, which is not at all how that works. I do fully agree with this last paragraph though. And judging by the fact they created a project that violates millions of licenses, they certainly seem very eager to participate. One very important thing though, is it's probably very difficult to prove AI derivative code. So let's say you have a GPL project with this really efficient sorting function, for example. It's a completely custom sorting function, but it's really, really efficient. And let's say you have this function that was outputted by Copilot, which is really, really similar to that very efficient sorting function. But the way that Copilot got there has nothing to do with that GPL code. It just happened to get there through all of the data available in the model. Is that still a derivative work? When explained like that, you're probably going to say no. The problem though is the more complex a model gets, the harder it gets to understand how it got to a specific output. And with something at the scale of GitHub, tracking down an individual function is going to be basically impossible. Something a bit more clear though is when it just dumps out code blocks verbatim. Now, as of last year, Nat was saying this happens 0.1% of the time and that this is extremely rare. And it does sound rare, but you have to think about how common 0.1% actually is. That is one out of a thousand times. So let's say you're using GitHub Copilot on a fairly, you know, low level. Let's say you're using it maybe... 10 times a week, maybe 20 times a week. So 52 weeks in a year, at 20 times a week, that's over a thousand times a year. So you're probably going to have at least one verbatim code block. And think about how many people are using Copilot. There's going to be a lot of verbatim code blocks. I have no doubt that detection mechanisms are going to improve over time though, because in some cases when it happens, it looks really, really bad. And GitHub is fully aware this is a problem because they added this option here, suggestions matching public code. GitHub Copilot can allow or block suggestions matching public code. This should not be an option this should just automatically be set to disabled. I do want to mention this code snippet option here isn't referring to the code you upload to GitHub. This is referring to the snippets themselves. So whether we can use the data of whether you select the snippet or modify the snippet to actually go and improve the service. The licensing is obviously a major concern with Copilot, but it's not the only concern because a paper came out last year that found that 40% of the output from Copilot had a major known vulnerability. Once again, stuff like this can be improved and can be mitigated, but it is still a massive problem. Now, I want to make something clear for the people who might come across this that are big fans of Copilot. I think Copilot is an incredibly useful tool. If you don't care about licensing and you're happy to just break the law all over the place, it is a great tool. It does mostly have great output and it is a massive productivity improvement. But I don't think that is worth it to continue to erode the value of software licensing. But maybe you disagree. In which case, let me know in the comment section down below. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, it's on your pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.